Today, we're going to do guided practice. So take the paper that's in the middle of your table, and let's get started. Now, here's what's on your table. It says we have four moles of aluminum, three moles of oxygen gas, and it makes two moles of aluminum oxide. But in reality, we're going to start with five moles of aluminum, four moles of O2. So, what do we have to do first on a limiting reactant product? Balance. It's already balanced, correct? Yep. Find the known. We are the knowns given. All right. Now, we're looking for the limiting reactant. Once we find that, is the excess A reactant hard to find? No, because no, it's the other one. Now, the next step is pick a product, and this is easy. We got to pick a product. How many products do we have in this problem? One. One. So we're gonna our, we're gonna see how much aluminum oxide we can make from five moles of aluminum and four moles of oxygen. What are we starting with? What units? Moles. moles. So we can make this a simple problem, can't we? A mole to mole problem. So we start with five moles. All right. Right there. Right. Yep. Five moles of aluminum. What's the next thing? What's the most important thing in a stoichiometry problem? It's in every single one we do. What's the thing that we put in every stoichiometry problem? No. Nope. In every problem, the mole ratio. All right. So what is the ratio of aluminum oxide to aluminum? One to two. Two to four or one to two. You are both correct. So we come up with how many moles of aluminum oxide? Five divided by two. 2.5. You should be able to do these kind of problems in your head. Now, we start over again and do the same process with oxygen. Well, O2. What's in every stoichiometry problem? Mole ratio. That will probably be a question on your quiz tomorrow. What's the ratio of aluminum oxide to oxygen? What do we got? Two to three. Can't really mess with that, right? So four times two divided by three. Somebody? Two point, two point what? Two point, we'll round it off, six, seven. Which one now of these two are the limiting reactant? And how do you know? Why? Aluminum, it makes the least. So, our limiting reactant is the aluminum. Our excess is oxygen, because that's the other one that we're going to have left over. So, aluminum is the limiting. It makes the least amount of product. Remember, 
Every problem we do is going to have the mole ratio in it. Okay, are we ready to move to part two of this problem? Yes, no? Okay, here we go. Now, this one, you can use an answer you just got. We want to know how many grams of aluminum oxide do we expect? Which one was our limiter? Aluminum. How many moles did we make of aluminum oxide? So that's our known right now. 2.5 moles of Al2. Oh, three. So, listen up. Here's what happened. You figured out which one was the limiting reactant. You also figured out at the same time the most we can make with the limiting reactant. So we're going to take this number up here and start with it down here. Now, we want to get to grams. So grams of aluminum oxide are going to go on top. Moles is going to go on bottom. What do we know that has the units grams per mole? Okay, so this is going to be the molar mass of aluminum oxide. So, let's figure it out. We got Al and oxygen. How many aluminums? At What's their molar mass? 27. Thanks, Cletus. So that's what? Uh, 54? How many oxygens? Times? And you should be able to do these in your head by now. What do we got, 102? Make sure I'm doing it right. So, somebody multiply 2.5 times 102. Should be able to do that in your head. Let's do what? 55, 55, five, five. 255. So that's, the, you don't have to do anything complicated when it asks how much are you going to make because you've already figured out how many moles you're going to make and it's, then you just take that amount and multiply it by the molar mass. So these really didn't matter. All right. All right. So, together or alone at your table, work out the next problem. Work out problem. All righty. Hmm. Oh, T1, it's this one here. All right. Here we go. Who can I pick on? Is it balanced? Somebody want to balance it? What? One, six, four. Hmm. Hmm. How many we got here? How many we got here? So we probably should do this, this, and this. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, it's not working out, is it? So we need to put a four here. And a six. You're, you are correct. So it's balanced. Do we have our knowns? 
Do we know what product we're going to use? Or don't we have a choice? We don't have a choice. Don't have a choice. Uh oh. What are we starting with? Oh, so we're going to go to. Nah, we're going to go all the way. We're going full fledged mass to mass. So here we go. 0 0.01054321. Grams of phosphorus. Anybody remember from yesterday how many conversion factors there are in mass to mass? Three. 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 One, two, three. And we're going to end up with grams of PCL3. Kind of ran off the page there. I'm going to shrink this down so I got a little more workspace. So we want to get, we always want to try to get two moles to start with from grams. So what's our first conversion factor? Morgan said it earlier. All right, what's the molar mass of phosphorus? P. Or P4, actually, sorry. P4. P4, 31 times 4, which is, did we use 30, 60, use 31, don't round it off to 30, 124, 124, all right, what's our next conversion factor, this is our door, we're getting where we're going from where we came from. What's the ratio of PCL3 to P4? Four to, Four to one. And then we need to get to the final product of the grams of PCL3 phosphorus trichloride, for those of you keeping track at home. What does phosphorus trichloride Use 35 and a half for chlorine. So somebody do 35 and a half times 3 plus 31. Fortuna, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What can I cancel? What can I cancel? Grams of P. Grams of P. What else can I cancel? Moles. What else? All right. Now, multiply the tops, divide by the bottoms. What I would do is I would take this times this times this, hit enter, and then divide by 124. Otherwise, your, your calculator may do it order of operations wrong. Okay, you multiply all the tops together, and this is a top. So, guys, what you would do, boys, you're going to go... Point one zero oh five four three times four times one thirty seven point five divided by one twenty four. What'd you get? Does any anybody else get that? No. Uh oh. What'd you get? Okay, hold on, Sydney. Tell me what you got. Anybody else get what Sid got? So, somebody tell me that. 0. what? Okay, we'll just stop at 467. Grams 
of PCL3. Now we have to do this again, correct? Mm -hmm. So we start with what we know. Grams of grams, how many conversion factors? Three. 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 What is 35 and a half times two? Don't use your calculator. 35 and a half times two, don't use the calculator. Try again. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. 35.5 times two. 71. You guys were going over here, you were going over here. Justin didn't say it loud enough. All right. Mole ratio of PCL3 to chlorine gas. Mole ratio. Somebody, anybody. Four to six, can we simplify that? Two to three. And then finally, it's hard to find out what the grams of PCL3 per mole is because we didn't do that already, right? <laughs> we already did it, guys. 137.5 equals grams of PCL3. So multiply the tops together, divide by the bottoms. Do parentheses makes your life easier in case it. So 0.178 times 2 times 137.5. Enter. Divided by 71. Divided by 3. I'm going to ask for verification from two different sources or three. Somebody do the math. Tell me. 0.2998 Is Sid right? Abby? Uh-oh. Let me see. Um, point two, two, nine, eight. All right, point one seven eight times two times one thirty seven point five divided by seventy one divided by whoop. I got point two two nine eight. <laughs> All right, so boys and girls, what is our limiting reactant? Okay, chlorine is the limiting reactant. Cl2, the excess is the phosphorus. All right, so we've determined what our limiter is, what our excess is. Now, here's a weird thing, Mr. Lasorsa threw this in. What is our limiting reactant? The chlorine. So we're going to start with 0 0.2998 grams of PCL3. And all he wants us to do is what? Figure out how many milligrams there are. This is not a stoichiometry problem. This is a conversion problem. Yep. Was it? Oh, okay. Easily fixed. Here we go. All right. Can anybody tell me in one gram how many milligrams do we have? Where'd you find that at? Where? 
It's right on the paper. Can we cancel anything out? So, I better turn this back to yellow because red doesn't show up very good. Somebody take point two two nine eight times a thousand. What do you got? Two twenty nine point eight milligrams of PCL three. You could have easily moved the decimal point how many places? Where would you get the three decimal places from? Three zeros. Very good, Sid. She's being louder than you. You're just mumbling over here. What? And part C. What's part C say? I didn't write the whole thing down, I guess. How many grams of excess? All right. So here's what we have to do. We said the excess was this. This is our excess amount. So what we have to do right now is another mass to mass, guys. We have to see what kind, if I have this amount of chlorine, because this limits the reaction, correct? The chlorine limits the reaction. How much phosphorus would I actually need rather than what they told me I had? So you have to do a mass to mass to figure out how many grams of P4 you actually need, not what they gave you. All right, so what you do is you take your limiting reactant and determine what would be the right amount of phosphorus to use. What did we say chlorine's molar mass is? Chlorine gas, what's his molar mass? 71. What is the mole ratio of phosphorus to chlorine? What do you got, one to six? Let's see here, yep, it is. And then what do we say the molar mass of P4 is? Somebody tell me. It's up at the beginning of the problem. What do you what? <laughs> The molar mass? Molar mass is 124. Thank you. All right. So cancel out our units. So multiply your top together. Divide by your bottoms. This is 71 right here, not. What'd you get, Sid? Zero point zero five one eight grams of P4. Okay, guys, this is the last one here. This is how much you actually need of the P4. How much did you start with? How much did you start with? 0 0.010543 grams. How much do you actually need? 
So let me put this in red. So point one zero five four three minus point zero five one eight. So point one oh five four three minus zero point zero five one eight. What did you get? So your excess equals zero point zero five three six three grams of P four. Now, you don't want to have excess phosphorus laying around because it's very flammable. And phosphorus does not burn out until it's used up. All right? Come on. So this is your answer here. So next step, try the 